Yeah. We mentioned that two. Okay. Did I leave the last one off? Okay, cool. Um, so water, we mentioned this before when we were talking about um, intermolecular forces, right? And how it affects the, the, the boiling point. Water is very, very unusual. Um, it has that negative slope on its heating curve. The temperature at which it boils is extraordinarily high compared to other things, its size. And water is um, the most common liquid on Earth. If you think about liquids that you run into in everyday life, most of them are aqueous solutions, right? You know, even your coffee, right? It's, it's the liquid part is the water. <laughs> That guy's angry. That guy's angry. Most, most liquids are water. This is acetone, that's not water, but there's not a whole lot of compounds that are liquid. <laughs> Room temperature. Oh, I know, I know. Um, so it has that, um, it's a liquid at room temperature because of the hydrogen bonding. Um, this is the main solvent in living organisms and in our environment. The very high specific heat capacity moderates our, our climate. And the other weird thing about it is it expands upon freezing. Most solids are less dense I'm sorry, most solids are more dense than their liquids, but water is less dense because when water forms a solid and it crystallizes, the, the particles actually spread apart a little bit. And that's why ice floats on water. That's why if you put a head of lettuce in the freezer, it's gonna turn into mush because the water in the cells expands and breaks the cell walls and just really messes up, you know, you just, you can't freeze lettuce and eat it later. Yeah. Can I test our hypothesis? Absolutely. Are you going to credit for it? <laughs> no. If you read the syllabus, <laughs> and you should. You get it in the first, the first day. No, no extra, extra credit. credit. <laughs> I don't do extra credit. But this is why freezing kills oh, plants. Right? Because it, as the water expands, it, it, it can break metal pipes, even. I mean, it's just, it's incredibly strong. How do, um, my question, this is about the metal pipes. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, especially like in the winter, mm -hmm. like they come in, and what are they really doing to prevent your pipe from bursting? So, there's different things. It depends on whether, the, like, if a home is vacant mm -hmm. in the winter, um, then usually they will drain the water lines. Like, like if you have a cabin up in the mountains, you probably have to drain the water lines so that there isn't water in there to freeze. Because if the water freezes, it, as it expands, you can do this too, it might make a mess. Um, put a, a full sealed bottle of water in your freezer. Oh, that Yeah, what happens? It explodes. it explodes, right? Well, what's really fun is if you live in the Midwest and you left some Diet Coke in the cans in the car overnight uh, yeah. and you come out and they've all popped. So, and like, if, if the home isn't vacant, then what's the difference? So, if the home isn't vacant, usually people have a heater oh. <laughs> to keep themselves comfortable, yeah. right? But you still have to watch out for any pipes that are outside the house. Mm -hmm. And so that's why sometimes you'll see pipes that are like wrapped with um, insulation, gotcha. right? That is... That's not going to work if it stays below freezing all day and all night. But if it's just going to be for a few hours at night, 
it'll take a long time for it to freeze solid. And so that'll be okay. But in the Midwest, that doesn't work. Um, where the ground freezes solid. Yeah. And so, like, um, if you have a sprinkler irrigation system in your lawn, mm -hmm. you have to drain that at the end of the summer because otherwise it'll freeze in the winter and it'll then you'll have to find a big mess. You know, great question. Anybody else have any questions? Is that the one I skipped or is the next one I skipped? Um, one more? That's it, that's the last one. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not gonna test you on this, but I just wanna tell you about it a little bit. Um, so, you know, water pollution. We're all aware that that's not a good thing. It's important to have clean water to drink. There are different kinds of water pollution. There are biological contaminants and there are chemical contaminants. Biological contaminants are gonna be microorganisms and these can make you really, really sick. Um, e. coli, all kinds of bad stuff. Um, typically this enters the water when animal or human waste is dumped into bodies of water. But this can be treated either chemically using something like bleach or iodine or by boiling it. You can kill those organisms, right? And, you know, sometimes when um, like strawberries or lettuce or something gets recalled, it's because the water that was used in that field got contaminated by cow poop from the cows that live up the hill, right? And then if you don't wash it, well, then you can get really, really sick. Chemical contaminants are actually a lot more difficult to get rid of. They're probably not going to make you super sick in the short term, but they can cause some pretty bad effects in the long term. But you can't just boil them to get rid of them because most of them are non-volatile. So they're not going to evaporate or get out of the water when you boil it and they're not alive so you can't kill them. Actually, what you can do is concentrate it if you boil away a lot of the water, then you've actually made it worse. And chemical contaminants are gonna come from industrial and household dumping, from pesticide and fertilizer use. Like I think everybody knows, you know, if you change the radiator fluid in your car, you're not supposed to just dump that in the gutter and let it run down into the river um, because that causes chemical contamination. Any questions?